Hi everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Flowjoy University's module, and where we're going to be talking about sample quality check in Flowjoy 10. My name is Christian Aguilera Sandoval, and Flowjoy's application scientist for the Southeast. Data quality assessment is quite critical. It's been approximated that about 13% of all FCS files have some sort of fluorescence anomaly. Systematic changes happen during acquisition. These should be avoided. However, since they do tend to occur, there needs to be a means to detect these anomalies and resolve them. In Flowjo, we have three methods to do just that. The first one would be to use the native tool, check sample quality, and then use the sample quality badge from the workspace. Alternatively, we also have two plugins. One is Flow AI, the other is Flow Clean. I will be discussing in somewhat of detail each of these three methods and then go into some actual data and work through all three methods, methods with you. So first, the sample quality check tool and batch that are native to the workspace. What does it do? Well, it scans median intensity versus time and it checks for anomalies in each parameter. The reasons for these anomalies, well, it could be due to clogs, change of voltage, laser, or photomultiplier tube failure, as well as other electronic or mechanical issues. We have color-coded the different uh, levels of anomalies or amounts of anomalies, and these go from best to worst in blue, green, purple, and red. Should you get a purple or red, we recommend that you then use an exclusion or not gate to remove the anomalous data from your analysis. And like I mentioned previously, I will go through and how to do all that with you in a couple minutes. But first I wanted to show you this figure that we see here and that shows the three badges that are associated with your sample. If you see the circle, the circle there, that's where we call the quality check badge. That's the one that will get filled in with either the blue, green, purple, or red dot. If you go ahead and double click it, what you're going to get then is this uh, representation of the medians of the parameter versus time that I was mentioning that Flojo uses to check for the quality of your sample. Next is our plugin, FlowClean. FlowClean was previously published in 2016, and what it does, it will take your FCS file, it will then partition each of the parameters into tube segments based on the medians. As you can see here, they're labeled as zero and one in the first part of the figure. Next to that, then the next step would be that it uses these medians to generate addresses, as you will here where we could see, for, for instance, the population one and two have the same address based on the parameters. Therefore, it concatenates them into one population and those are then generating several populations based on your own sample. This is then transformed into CLR. And as you, we have a graphical representation of CLR on your right. And then we track these populations over time and any that differ will then get flagged as an anomalous event and you will be given to outputs flow, clean, good data and flow, clean, bad data again. We will go through with this with uh, some real-time data analysis so you can see how this works. Last would be Flow AI. Flow AI is another one of our plugins. This one's very popular with flow cytometry users. This was also published in 2016 in Bioinformatics. And what it does, it checks for three major things. One, flow rate. Two, signal acquisition. And three, your dynamic range. As you can see for both uh, plugins, I have listed the reference in case you would like to go back and read more into detail in each of the plugins. Next, let's start um, going to go ahead and go into the workspace and do some real time analysis with these aforementioned tools. Okay, like we mentioned, so let's do some real time analysis with the three aforementioned tools. Let's begin with the native check sample quality. 
So you would then click on Tools and click on Check Sample Quality. There, you can see that the Check Sample Quality batch gets filled in with a blue, or in this case, a purple dot meaning that there is a matter of concern with these samples. So how do we access the figure where we see the meeting of parameter versus time? Well, like I mentioned, you would double click the batch and you would then see the medians of the parameters over time. For this instance, for example, forward scatter is okay. But if we go, if we scroll down the options, we see that in fact, this is all of them look fairly good which is why this one was labeled with blue. Well, let's look at a sample that looks poor. Let's double click the batch for this sample. And there we can see on, for example, on site scatter area, that the spike is quite severe. When we look at it across the board, we see that that was the most severe as well with site scatter width. So I also mentioned, how do you access your sample to create your NOT gate? So you could go ahead and remove the anomalous data. You would double click your sample. This will open up a gate. You would then do your X axis and change it to time. And you would then check for the parameter of concern. And here uh, we could do, as you can see here, all the parameters are listed. One that we saw was, for instance, uh, site scatter um, width. We could check more instance here, which was for scatter. Now, if you can't remember what those may be, you double click again. Here we go. Site scatter width, site scatter area. So we would go back, open our window, and then let's do site scatter area. And we could see that there are there is a problem over here at the end. So the way we could do this is we go ahead and collect it, create a gate around it. Let's tell the, call this our time gate. Then you click on active gate once, and then you unclick the box that says events inside. This, then you could double click the gate, and you now have the samples that have the clean data. You would do this for all the parameters of concern, and then you would start doing your downstream analysis. Now, what about if you wanted to use some of the plugins, which is a lot faster, and it's gonna be far more accurate. So you click on the sample of interest, you click on workspace, click on plugins, then click on flow AI, select all the non-compensated parameters, like so, as well as time, select remove outliers. And these buttons, it has for in this drop-down menu with the different tests that I mentioned previously. I will keep the all checks if you like. This is about how frequent you wanted to do the sections, the check for every second. And then if you wanna see how strict you want the algorithm to be is where you could go and change the change point penalty here, where the higher the value, the less strict it is, okay? I like to also click off the remove outliers and save the R script so we know exactly what it is that the algorithm is doing. We then uh, go ahead and click okay. And in a matter of a minute or less, we will get an output of the Flow AI good events and the Flow AI bad events, like so. Well, as you can now see, we got about 9% as Flow AI bad events and about 91% were characterized as Flow AI good events. What about if you wanted to go ahead and check what the, why were these flagged? So you would click highlight and select the Flow AI node and then you will click drag and drop it onto your layout editor. So what you then would do is this will give you these um, visualizations as to how the number of events that were removed, the bins and the flow rate and all the other information that I previously described. Alternatively, we could also create another layout and we could select the two um, samples, populations, put them in and do an overlay of each other. Select the parameters. And then check what it was that got removed per parameter, as you can see here. All right, next, let's see how we would do flow AI, uh, flow clean, pardon. 
So let's select the sample. You would then go to plugins, select flow clean, select again all the non computated parameters as well as selecting time. Again, I would save the R script and you would just click on OK. And as you can see here, then you get an output. There's diff there are different algorithms, so they check for different things. Well, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to tech support or contact me if um, you wish. Okay, thank you so much. And I hope again, uh, we talk soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.